I'm Jake here with Amplify and this is Blizzard, hello. Okay, so can I know your real name or are you just yeah. Blizzard for this interview? Yeah, I'm I'm Brad. Hello, Brad Green. Blizzard, good to meet you guys. What do you do and play in all this then for us? Um I'm an MC slash artist from Manchester. I play piano and drums, uh, play piano in my set a lot and do acoustic music. Some I noticed in your set was you did a lot of singing and you were very good at it. So, <laughs> so are people commonly surprised when they see you and you open with your rap and they just start singing like that? Do you ever see people surprised? Sometimes, you know, what's cool about it is the fact that I don't always publicise it and it's just something that I just spring on people and they can either accept it or they can dismiss it. But most of the time when I do the piano and the rapping and singing at the same time, it's received quite well. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, singing's one of them things that I'm trying hard to pick up. But I guess a lot of reverb on my microphone kind of helps me a treat. You know? Some that we noticed, me and Tony, the guy behind the camera, we were over here interviewing and then we were like wait wait is that the is that the rapper guy yeah. and then it was just like yeah oh he sings oh right so anyway right do you feel the gig went well i do yeah yeah i think that in all honesty there could have been more people but then again it's quite early and with festivals they tend to pick up during the evening late afternoon like five six so i was trying so hard to get a later set just so more people could hear it but I, beggars can't be choosers at the end of the day and i really enjoyed it the crowd were really nice and i met everyone beforehand anyway and i was just kind of going around saying safe to people so that made it even more pleasant for me because i felt like they were familiar faces sometimes i go to a show and everyone just looks like a silhouette because i've not met them yet so it's good to have like uh, inside knowledge on your demographic before you actually go on stage i saw you today you, you seem pretty well, well received by everybody it was, yeah it's cool it was cool like could have gone worse like i mean could have gone better as well in my opinion i always try and better myself and try and top my show five times over every time but you know what i mean i'm only human so i guess i messed up a couple of times as well but like, did you yeah i a couple of lyrics i stumbled on but i guess i must have been all right if no one noticed it i don't think anyone did no but i'm the kind of i'm the kind of person to like laugh in the middle of my set if i do mess up so then it draws more attention to it sometimes i'll just be like haha i messed up let's go on to the next track but yeah it was fun anyway and I couldn't really have asked for it to have gone better, you know. Well, I definitely enjoyed it. I can say that. Thank you. Right then, an interesting one now. Your house is burning down. You have time to grab one thing. What you grab? Whoa. Pets and family and all this get out fine. Everything's all right. Right, that's cool. That's cool. Um, honestly, oh, can I bring a box? Or does that count as more than one thing? You can bring a collection of stuff. I'd bring all my books. Swear to God, I bring The Alchemist is one of them books that everybody needs to read. The Secret by Rhonda Byrne is another book that everybody needs You've to read. You've read The Secret? The Secret's an awesome book. I read that like five I times like this. over. I've read that book like five times over and it helped me through a lot of tough times. So it's always been quite sentimental to me and it's always been something that latched to me and I've wanted to show it to everyone, you know, like it's one of them books that you'd want to borrow out to everybody just so that people can be on the same wavelength as you after you've read it. And um, it would either be my books or my books or oh, probably my writing pads but then again that counts as books so i can kind of get away with that right just chuck him in and don't tell anyone yeah, just yeah, just, just slide him <laughs> on the topic of books if you could put yourself into any book and be the a character in that book or just be yourself living in that world which book would you go into and who would you be if you were going to be someone um Lenny from Of Mice and Men has always really inspired me. I think he's a really cool character that doesn't get the credit that he's due. And the thing that I like about him is that he kind of fights to be heard and he fights to be acknowledged because the fact he's really goofy and tall and he has little man syndrome in the book is really interesting because it's kind of a way to express yourself and a way to kind of open up to people at the same time. So either that or... I don't know. I'd want to be in. Um, I'd love to be in a George Orwell book. That'd be cool as hell. Like it, it can apply to films as well. If you want to go into a film world, or that changes everything. <laughs> um, not film, but more of a series. I'd want to be Jesse Pinkman in Breaking Bad. I think Jesse Pinkman is the guy, like the only guy that should matter in any TV show. And yeah, as you can tell, I'm pretty, pretty damn addicted to Breaking Bad. Was that a swear word? I don't know. Okay, we, but we're not even allowed to do Jesse's little word. Oh, oh the B word. We can't say it. So popular. 
All, all I'm saying is... It's Son of a female dog. In it, it's going to go so real at the end of the series. And also, by the way, if you've... I just wanted to throw this in. If I could be in a film, I'd love to be in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, my God. If I could be in that film, game over. Like, great film. Favourite quote from that is about the dolphins. Humans think they're smarter than dolphins because we have buildings and wars. Dolphins think they're smarter than humans for exactly the same reason. Yeah, exactly, you know what I mean? And the music in it is well... Is it, the music in Hitchhikers is awesome as well, and anything narrated by Stephen Fry should just be open... Uh, acknowledged but with open arms, you know? Funnily enough, we've got a question here. Um, what's the meaning of life? 42. <laughs> no, um, I think the meaning of life is to be able to find someone that you can give your all to and you can just be yourself because one thing that people kind of get really weird about is being themselves and it's a key part of living, you know what I mean, and being able to open up to people and like give your everything to another person, it's important and another thing that's important is to breed and to have offspring and to raise your offspring right you know what i mean because a lot of people slack being parents i'm not a parent and i don't know if i'm going to be a parent anytime soon but i'm going to raise my kids right you know what i'm saying like and that's important raising your children right so they'll raise their children right etc 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 the world is a happier place the end just gotta make sure they all go amplify exactly yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. This t-shirt's awesome, by the way. People don't know that I'm into rock as much as I am. I was actually listening to Under Oath, like, all the way here and listening to Bring Me The Horizon all the way here. So, if you didn't know that, Semper Eternal's the best album of all time. Get it, or you slack. Game over. Right then, so, on the topic of something like that, which bands would you most like to tour with and where would you go with them? Um, <sighs> Or artists? I've always been very, very inspired by Gallows, and I've always been inspired by Frank Carter as an individual. Gallows? He's not Ga in... They're not yeah. in Gallows anymore. It's pure love now, isn't it? Singer of Alexis on Fire is now in Gallows, if I remember correctly. But um, other than that, like, there's so many people I'd love to tour with. I'd love to um, I'd love to tour with Rudimental as well. They're a great live act, and people seem to downplay them a lot because they make music that's commercially accessible. But in fact, it's not that That's bad. one album I've been meaning to get, honestly. Home by Rudimental. It's a great record. I highly recommend that and uh, another album I highly recommend is King Cruel's record I think it's called Six Feet Under the Moon King Cruel's like a 19 year old kind of post-punk influenced artist from London I think he's from Peckham and he's got this really interesting sound that I've never heard before and like me and my girl just got so inspired by his stuff and like me and my girl make music together she's a producer I'm an MC it works hand in hand and we listen to a lot of different music like and just get inspiration from as much as possible, you know. So, final answer, which bands would it be? Right, can I pick a couple? Yeah. All right. Massive tour, come on. Straight away, oh, if I could do, right. Touring festival, yeah, come I, on, touring change, festival. Can I change this question and be like, if I could pick the lineup for download or pick the lineup for a big festival? Because if that was the case, I'd get Bring Me the Horizon, Under Oath, Gallows, um, Alexis on fire if they ever came back to life, which I hope they do. Um, Dillinger Escape Plan, absolutely sick band. People don't seem to understand that in it, you know. Um, who else? Massive fan of, I love Lamb of God, I'm not going to lie, Lamb of God is sick. Um, System of a Down, also a sick band. Um, I could go on for ages. Come on, you can, you can bring bands. Devil Driver, Devil Driver. Damn you can bring right. bands back from the dead. You can bring people back from the dead for this tour. Come on. Bring back Sid Barrett from Pink Floyd. Please bring back Sid Barrett from Pink Floyd. Or, um, who else? Who else? Getting Floyd back together for this then. Yeah, definitely get Floyd back together on some Quadrophenia style setup. That's, that's what I want to see. I want to see a Pink Floyd song featuring Ollie Sykes. That's how, how would that even go down? Uh, but then again, like, if you listen to Deathbeds on Bring Me the Horizons album, yeah, he can actually do solemn stuff. So, I think it could work if he didn't scream on it, and even though I love his screaming, but yeah, something like Shine On You Crazy Diamond with like Bring Me The Horizon deathbed <laughs> vocals on Shine On You Crazy <laughs> Diamond! <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> exactly like that. Well, should we do it? Right. Shine On You Crazy Diamond! This one. is M Paternal! Right, one, two, three, we'll do it together. One, two, three. Shine On, on You Crazy Diamond! diamond! and stuff yeah over and over <laughs> again and again will we ever see the end i don't know i don't know, know. well i'm enjoying this interview okay
Right, okay. Rain, One last thing. To us. What what advice would you give someone who's starting out in music right now? Quit us. Get it under the get it under the hat. Right, so my advice to anyone that's starting to make music is always, always carry on because quitting will completely ruin it. And also speak to as many people that are in the same field as you. If you're a rapper, speak to as many rappers as possible. I've just dropped my water. Speak to as many rappers as possible. If you're a producer, speak to as many producers as possible. Um, and another thing is always carry an umbrella if you've got a camera. That's another massive, massive thing that needs to be heard anyway. So yeah, um, I'm Blizzard, by the way. Thanks for having me. Thanks for Cheers. listening to my show. Cheers for the interview. Right, it started raining, so it's cut it short. See you in a bit. It's a blizzard outside, so you've got to go now. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Done.